Hello, one and all. We're glad that you came here. You had many places to go today, but you chose to come and learn about the video pirate. He's been known by many names, but I'll let him get to that himself. My name is Wes Johnson. I'll be your interviewer here this evening as we tread the choppy waters of the video pirate. Who is he? How the hell did he get here? We're about to find out. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, the video pirate. Please welcome to the stage, the video pirate. You're saying that's, well, that's old Ben. You can come around this way. You don't have to climb up that way. You can walk up this plank, uh, Mr. Pirate. There be railings here. Step right up. Uh, right over here. Why don't you step between me and uh, this would be, uh, you say, uh, Ben. Hi, that's, that's Ben. Old Ben. Old Ben. Uh, old Ben him. Skinbeard. You remember him, Old Ben Skinbeard. Yes, that's Old him. Ben Skinbeard, uh, right. the sailor. <laughs> yeah, Old Ben Skinbeard, the sailor. The sa the third. That's right, he was Old Ben Skinbeard, the sailor, the third. Esquire. Shut up. All right. This would be Old Ben Skinbeard. Now you used to have a, a comedy duo. I that we did a long uh, time yes, ago, back the in the days. Video uh, pirates, correct? The video pirates, me. Captain Cable, Captain Clark Cable, and uh, and Old Ben. And Old Ben. Now, you traveled through the uh, the East Coast. Uh, pretty much you were on the cover of newspapers. Up and you down, were... lad. We was up and down the coast. We was in and out of the mainland. We was on the post, as you remember, twice. Yes. I. Those but were the days. You old know? Ben Skinbeard. The sailor. The third. Ph.D. Esquire. Shut up. He is looking a little worse for wear here. Well, he let himself die overnight, you know. He, um, I think he done rotted away. Let me, let me see if he's got a pulse. Either he's dead or my watch has stopped. I'm not sure. Well, he doesn't have a pulse, but he has a lovely smile, and we're glad to see both of you here uh, tonight. Now, uh, you'll be back again later this evening with Voice of Palooza at 10 p.m., will you not? Aye, blood and thunder, and, and more to your, <laughs> your liking. Well, I hadn't heard. That the, oh, do you have a phone, Mr. Pirate? Uh, no, no, I do not. I do not have a phone. Wait, I, how do pirates have phones? i, I got to take this call. So, uh, pay no attention. To you're this. not listed as a pirate on Voice of Blues. I understand that you have many aliases. <laughs> I've been known by many a name, sir. So, one of the names that you're known as is uh, Mike Rossen? Who told you? He did. Why, I should have cut you slow inch by inch when I had the chance. Old Ben. Now, from all the comedy troops that you've done and, and, and working through the years, you've worked uh, with the Video Pirates, you've done stand-up comedy, you've done many different things. One of the, the tools of the trade that you worked in was impressions, different voice impressions. Ah, well, we were impressionists like Renoir and Gauguin and uh, like the, the, oh, you mean doing vocal impressions? Vocal impressions, yeah, yes. Yeah, people, yes, we did that. Who were the, some of the right impressions you were known Robert for? Newton and our, what's what, that who's mean? that? What? I, right now, all the time I've been doing a pirate, I've been doing Robert Newton. Look him up. Robert Newton ah, as a pirate. Ah. So uh, that's what you didn't have Google in the days that uh, you started out, did you? Yeah, we had Google, but it wasn't the same thing. It was a different thing? Yeah, hey, quite a different thing. I... Is that something you can Google and find out? I doubt it. All right. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, as Mike Rossen, some of the people here may know you from some of your video game work. I, they might, but I, now, I, I'm looking at you, and I remember you. Me? No. Yes, yes. Not this face. Yes, you used to sail on, what was that ship? Ah, uh, the, uh, 
the uh, Fresh Victims. Uh, yes, the I SS Fresh well. Victims. And before right. that, you sailed on the Gross National Product. Yeah, that was you a ship I had to get. You joined us on the Zenith for a while. We did? You lost your head in a shipboard accident, and we replaced it with an oaken peg. This is Peghead Johnson, Wences and Pilge Rats. <laughs> 100% complete wood. <laughs> give, give, give it a knock right here. Go ahead, tap the side of the head. No, the head. You see, there we go. Um, now, what are some of the voices? I, I understand that you were in a game called, it was fairly obscure, Fallout 3. Oh, you're jumping ahead now. Okay, but Fallout 3, I was, yes. uh, I was the voice of Gob. Gob? In fact, I was the voice of all the male ghouls in that game. Every male ghoul Every was you? Every single male one. Well, they also sound the same, don't they? Well, why do they sound the same? Well, they all talk like uh, the Bobier sisters. Oh, from The Simpsons. That's right. All you do, and that comes from years of doing Popeye the Sailor. Oh, you yeah. You just grind your larynx into a fine powder, and then there you are. You know, you can you can just scream your lungs out, and it doesn't hurt anymore. Are there a lot of practical applications for the Popeye the Sailor voice? Why well, certainly. Um, let's see. When you get when you go to Popeyes, you can say, "I would like some fried chicken, please, and give me uh, some of those. Uh, uh, oh, give me some of those shrimps, though." And uh, do they then spit in your food? Yes, they do. Absolutely, <laughs> every time. And they don't have any spinach, so you know I don't go to Popeyes. But uh, well, you would think that Popeyes would have more spinach. You'd think so. No, red it's... beans and rice. He never got powers from red beans and rice, did he? Not once. No. It may be a nap. I think Popeye would start to get in a fight with Bluto, eat a big tub of red beans and rice, have a massive car brush, and take a nap. Yeah. Sir, you're going to have to clear this table. Other people would like to sit down and eat. Oh, I, I ought to. You know, and we did do impressions, and that was the thing that got people uh, listening to us, and it was... It was not cool to do impressions back then. That no. was cheating. Uh, anything other than doing stand-up comedy in a little suit with your sleeves pulled up to your elbows and saying, so, how's everybody doing tonight? That was what you did as a comic. Right. We did everything but that. You were basically a sketch comedy troupe on stage doing stand-up in a stand-up venue. That we were. And you were very different from everybody else. We had songs. We had sketches. We had little bits of patter. We were the Smothers Brothers. With guns. <laughs> I was Dickie Smothers, an old Ben there, old Ben Skinbeard, the sailor, the third, Ph.D. Esquire. Esquire uh, was the, the clown. And, uh, yes, we would, uh, we would run amok all over the stage working our little strange magic. How did people react to you when you were on stage doing stand-up? With this, you had the pirate gear, you had a gun that was live, you'd fire it into the crowd. Oh, yeah. Be careful, folks. Not live, no. No. But you, but you would. You had a, you had a gun that was, uh, you'd fire off into the crowd. We had a it, little song, remember? The, uh, uh, when, uh, uh, Should Have Gone With Fritz, when Rod oh, yeah. Reagan got yeah. elected. Do you remember that? Um, gee, let's see. Uh, <laughs> I remember it. Sensel. Well... Since old Ron is in again, we'll all be saying in the end, when blown to bits, should have gone to Fritz. Fritz yeah, that. <laughs> Grab that. whatever you can get, sir. Dig a hole and don't forget survival, survival kits. Should have gone with Fritz. Fritz. Looking like an after midnight gremlin. Gremlin. Fingers on the button and it's trembling. Call the Kremlin. Kremlin. He will feed and clothe the nation with fallout and radiation, radiation in a blitz. Should have gone with Fritz. Have you seen the things they do on Pennsylvania Avenue? Putting weapons in the air, out in face and everywhere. High tax, no one hollers. Cutbacks and lots of dollars taken from the poor. For a really big war, boom! Well... Ron won't have a lot of fun when he's alone in Air Force One, and he admits, should have gone with Fritz. But he, we didn't. And so. Speaking of songs. Now, did, that, did that resonate with anyone? Because that's the, the politics of that are several years old. And when this first happened and came out, it was like, 
Oh, that's so clever. That's lovely. It's, it's topical. It's current events. Bravo. And now it's like, yeah, we're going to get back to you when we finish with our history class. The thing about political material is it burns like flash cotton. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have to keep up with stuff that, that sticks around. Now, here's a song that most of y'all will, will remember from your childhood. It's very dear and uh, you know, dear to our hearts. It's very old. And I'd like to uh, lead the crowd such as you are, uh, in, in this... Uh, you might get some of these people who are right here in the front to join along with you just be out of sheer well, intimidation. We're but those who are near the back might start songs. creeping out uh, as There's we get in. There's songs we got in, in store. First of all, we've got to hoist up the Jolly Roger. If this is going to be a pirate show at all, Dad, blast it, blast your hide into the, by the great horn spoon. We've got to hoist up the Jolly Roger, and to do that, we have to do it singing a jolly old sea shanty. Now, I know most of you know what a sea shanty is. How many by the show of hands know what a sea shanty is? Yeah. Well, wow, that's a pretty good crowd. One, Very piratey crowd here with us today. Hey, the shanty man sings and the rest of you that's hauling along, well, you sing the rest of it. I'll take the lead, though all of you will know what to do as I hoist up the Jolly Roger, the skull and crossbones, the cranium and intersecting femurs. Ready? Who lives in a pineapple under the sea? Absorbing the yellow and porous is he. If nautical nonsense be something you wish, then drop to the deck now and flop like a fish. Ready, Sponge Bob Square Pant. Sponge Bob Square Pant. Sponge Bob Square Pant. Sponge Bob. Okay, good. Give yourselves a hand. You sing like albatross. You really do. That's not a flute that you have there. What is that? No, that, that, well, that's a belaying pin. No, but let me make my point. You sing All like right. albatross. My friend Albert Ross, he's got a really good voice, and they sing just like him. It's great. Now, while we've got the Jolly Roger hoisted, I want you all to say it with me. What all true buccaneers say. Arr. Give me another R. Give me one more R. What's that spell? R. R. Very good. Now we are ready to sing the national anthem. Everyone stand, please. If you would hand me the banjo lily, sir. Banjo lily, sir. Thank you, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem has a long and checkered history. It started. I hope you know, it's an old drinking song in England. It uh, was called To Anacreon in Heaven. It was the theme song of a club to which Francis Scott Key belonged. And they were devoted to drinking and free love. And their poet of choice was a Greek, a dead Greek poet. He wasn't dead at the time. Oh, he was, quite dead. They prayed to him in heaven, to Anacreon, to give them license to be a club. And in the song, Zeus says, uh-uh, we can't let mortals do what they want. And so uh, then Momus and Apollo stand up and they say, yes, they can. Or, you know, it's a long song about, yeah, we have every right to drink and, you know, whatever. Francis Scott Key was thinking of that song when he wrote the Star Spangled Banner. Tonight, I'm going to sing for you the Star Spangled Banner, but as I learned it, I... I downloaded the lyrics and the tune off of the web, and uh, so I've kind of got one and then the other. You know, you go to different sites and you get different versions. So here is uh, the Star Spangled Come Together, and I hope this is our new national, national anthem. Okay. Here come old flat top. Here come grooving up slowly. He got choo-choo eyeballs, he won holy roller. He got hair down to his knees. He got to be a joker, he just do what he please. He wear no shoe shine, he got toe jam foot. 
He got monkey finger, he shoot Coca-Cola. He say, I know you, you know me. One thing I can tell you is you got to be free. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming who's brought stripes and bright stars through the perilous night? All the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rockets red glared, the bombs burning in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still set. Oh, say, does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er oh, the land of the free and the home of the brave come together right now? Two very different songs. Right, salute! Okay, that's enough of that. Thank you. Yeah. Let's hear it for Captain Cable. I don't know. I'd be okay with that as the national anthem. Maybe we'll do that tomorrow down at Verizon Center before the Caps game. Either that or this land is your land. I think that deserves every note. Well, yeah, but what Beatles songs can you mix that with? Well, it's an English song and an American, you know. You just, now, how does the English part come it. around? Well, because uh, the Beatles are English. Oh, that's right. Yeah. All right. I just thought this forgotten. land was your land. Oh, this no, land no, is no, my no, land. No, it couldn't be English. You jumped ahead of me. I, I see. I'm mixing my metaphors, too. Amazing Grace? <laughs> Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a red like me. I was once lost, but now I'm found. Once was blind, but now I see. Amazing Grace. Faces come out of the rain. <laughs> Amazing grace. Oh, you can do all kinds. I got another mashup for you. Here's a good one. <clears throat> I call it the uh, Pop Goes the Republic or the Battle Hymn of the Weasel. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He's trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He's loosed the fateful lightning of his terrible swift sword. Glory, glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> it all works out. It's the same. I don't know about you. I like these, uh, <laughs> I like these versions a little bit better. <laughs> yeah. Now, so you do a lot of singing uh, oh, yeah. with your, your stand-up. Now, do you do a lot of stand-up today? I've not done much stand-up uh, as such. So you hit the highest yeah. highs with the video Pirates, oh, and then you went in we sort of a... all over the stage. You yeah. were all over the place. We you guys were, are the highest energy group I've ever seen. And then... And out long forgotten. Now, well, now you're just more like Howard Hughes. That's not in as much as that you're in hiding, but that you pee in a lot of bottles. <laughs> I think we're the Sunshine Boys. You are the Sunshine Boys? Yeah, we're both kind of... I'm not in full retirement. Old skin beard, the real one. This is Ira, actually, by the way, just for, you know... Uh, Ira stands in occasionally yeah. for old Ben Skinbeard. He's standing in for old skin beard, and uh, old skin beard is... He wishes everyone well. He wishes he could have been here. You should have seen him back in the day. Uh, or you might see him outside your window tonight. <laughs> you never can. There, it's either this or that. So uh, now let's talk about, go, we'll go back. We're going to jump back and forth yes, yes. between these tonight. But I do want to ask you again, uh, in Fallout 3, you also played Colin Mariarty. Colin Mariarty, that I did. And this was a gentleman from Megaton. Now you had your own saloon. Right, that he did. And he was always demanding caps of folks and telling them they're in trouble. Were they in trouble? I usually. Did they give them caps? Sometimes. It was a good strategy then. It was. It was. It was. And so... He, May I have that for one moment? Uh, you're not going to destroy it, are you? I shall not. Okay, you answer it. I will. <laughs> See who it is. It might be one of those. Hi, this is Sherry calling about your Hello, phone. Hello, Michael Rosson's phone. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, hold on one moment. Uh, you should come down to panels three as Mike is now on stage and you've uh, rung us twice. Do you know where panels three is? 
So you should come to panels three because that's where we are and that's where the key to the room is. <laughs> Everybody say hi, James. Hi, James. All right, so we'll see you down here soon, okay? All right. Thank you very much. Bye. That was James, ladies and gentlemen. Huzzah, James. Excellent. That's pretty sad when a stray phone call gets more applause than anything else here today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Maybe I should have phoned it in. So, you, well, no, you, you never <laughs> phoned it in. Now, you were telling me something about this thing here. This is a belaying pin, laddie. Buddy. A belaying pin? A belaying pin. It makes for a handy cudgel, just like the butt of the pistol makes for a handy cudgel. Heck, if you get right down to it, the cutlass makes for a handy cudgel. But this is a pin. Uh, this is a, a something that would be in a wooden ship if you was driven by sails. The sail would be clued or tied off onto this little pin that sat in a hole, a double set of holes along the bulkhead there or along the rail uh -huh. of the ship. And you'd tie it off. If you needed to let go of that sail to put on the brakes, you'd pull the pin out. Those are good for hitting noggins as well. Aye, that they are. And they were in, in plentiful uh, number on board any ship. They'd have lots of extras of these. So you'd, you'd have one handy. It's you know, I just heard the other day that noggin, the term noggin, doesn't mean your skull at all. It means a cup. It's a cup, yeah. Of course it is. So how did that change from noggin, uh, a cup, to your skull? I think it was probably because people spoke sloppily and they got a flagon and a flagrant and a noggin and a nuggin mixed up. I don't know. All right. English is funny that way. It's all muddied up. Well, you like to play with the English. I do. Now, tell me, uh, Colin Mariarty, back on track, he uh, was not an English fella, was he? No, he was a bit Irish and a bit of the Scots, I believe. A little bit of each? He had a soft sort of a Celtic accent, yeah. I like to do that a little myself. It's but a mix in the match. was wasn't he? Well, he was. He was a little scary when you come in, but you also had uh, shady sorts that were in your bar. Not only did you have people like Mr. Burke, who was nefarious, wanting you to blow the whole place up, but you had another fellow by the name of Gob, Gob. who I think must have been related to Colin Mariarty, at least through vocal cords. <laughs> Gob was, poor Gob was very subservient. Half of the lines I did for him was, yes, sir. Okay, I'm sorry. What do you want? Okay, give me some caps. Yeah. Doing a voice like that, it's got to be a little uh, taxing on you. And Not really, no. Your sessions are how long when you go in to sit? Tell me a little bit about your average session that you would record at uh, Bethesda Softworks. There would be some that would be maybe a couple hours. And they'd always give you breaks, of course. You know, they'd give you some water, let you out of the booth once in a while. Sounds a little like prison. Yes, very much so. <laughs> With a microphone. But, but such a kind prison, such a wonderful thing. It's all quiet in there. I love that. You know, a lot of people, you know, Henry David Thoreau, right? I got a couple problems with Henry. I love his, his writings, but he said one thing. He said, uh, simplify, simplify, simplify. Remember that? And I'm thinking, Henry, wouldn't one simplify have sufficed? <laughs> and another thing he's known for saying is that most men lead lives of quiet desperation. And I, I, I'm sorry, I disagree. Mine is not quiet. Your desperation is more of the screaming, wailing, exactly. gnashing of teeth variety. Yeah, yeah. So when you're in the booth, it's nice and quiet, and there's this microphone, much like this one or another one, sometimes it's made with a, the puff yeah. screen on it. Oh, yeah, yeah, the windscreen. Yeah, right and over. then they, they feed you the lines, and you say the lines, and it's wonderful. Now, wonderful. how many pages do you normally have? Does it look like a phone book? Yeah, how did you get here? Ah, that's now, that's the, the point of the whole thing. Right. How did you get here? Well, we started being pirates. Yes. And as a result of being pirates, we got heard by people all around the city, and we started getting calls to do voiceovers for, well, I did. Skinbeard by then was sort of backing out of things. <coughs> and we get calls to do ads for Metro, and ads for Don Bayer Volvo, and radio ads that if, we're, if they were in Virginia, you get 35 bucks. If they were 35 Maryland, bucks? 30, yeah. Back then, that was a lot. But if when was, was this? Well, this was back in the early 80s. Mid -80s. Okay, the 80s. Because yeah. 30 and, bucks but, but, was a lot back in the 30s as well, so I didn't know. True. But you see, I'm not trying to date was, you or anything. We're going to wait until we cut right. you in half and count the rings to do that. Well, there were, yeah, and hey, be careful. I got, I got really high dust pressure. <laughs> and, uh, so, you know, uh, but, it, but I used to have these choices, uh, not many. Uh, you'd get 
right to work states in Virginia, and they'd, they'd be local ads, and you'd get paid, you know, a bit. Then, because of a guy named John Cummings and Celebrations who put out a, a, a demo disc for us, he had Mark and I go to a studio, he paid for everything, had us put out a big, long, like, minute and a half of us doing every impression that we could think of. Ronnie's Nightmare. Remember that? Where's yeah. the cheese? Where's the cheese? Where's the cheese? And that circulated around, and we got some calls. That started me on the voice acting career. It was just little stuff at first, and then over the years, it, people would call me for specialty novelty voices, and I would do them, and, oh, I couldn't be happier. That's how it all started. But how does it all end? Good Lord, who knows? On an iron, uh, in an iron coffin with spikes on the inside, I think. <laughs> Why the spikes on the inside? Keep you from coming out? Well, maybe they would be better placed on the outside. <laughs> <laughs> then no one could come in and disturb my precious solitude. Now, so we have Colin Mariarty and Gob. Uh, were there other characters that you portrayed in uh, Fallout 3? That was Dr. Lesko, who okay. was, uh, you know, tiptoeing right up to, to um, either Frank <laughs> from The Simpsons or uh, 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 Farnsworth. Um, from I Beach detect Rambo. a little Jerry Lewis in there. And a little, well, they're both ripping on Lewis, aren't they? Yeah, they they're are. both ngang ngang. Yeah. Yeah. So Lesko was just a silly guy who accidentally came up with giant ants, if I recall correctly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now, let me ask you a question. How many people out there killed Lesko? All right. All right. There we go. There's a few of them. Well, How many people out there killed uh, Moriarty? <laughs> How many people out there killed Gob? Uh, oh. Same guy. Killed every you one just, of you. You just like kill everybody, don't you? <laughs> How many? Uh, so. There's three of your characters now dead at this gentleman's hands. Easily. Easily. Hello. Uh, how many other characters in Fallout uh, 3 did you do? Uh, some, some generic voice characters, uh, Mr. Bob, Mr. This, Yes, Sir, Here's Your Report, you know, those kind of things. Um, I don't have a list of them handy, <laughs> but there were plenty of them, and, and they gave me a lot of work, and I was very, very happy about it. I do remember uh, passing you in the halls occasionally, which is always <laughs> lovely. Because back in the old days with the stand-up and uh, out on the circuit, we would see each other in a great number. You didn't recognize me for the first, like, five times you saw me. When? Because I was dressed as Reagan. Oh, oh, right, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was ba back in the day, and this is his panel, I shouldn't be telling you this, but I, would, uh, I was in a Gary Trudeau, the guy who did Doonesbury, also did a thing called Ratmaster Ronnie, so I would dress, well, is Ronald Wilson Reagan. <laughs> and there you go again. And uh, I would dress, I'd put like an hour and a half worth of makeup on. I was a younger lad, was very it, skinny, and I had to wear a padded chest. That was funny now. Was it Marymount College where we shot you? I think you did shoot me yes. there. And you had a blood capsule. Yes. We did, yeah, we, we shot Reagan. It was terrible. The, the, the thing is, was another time. we were young and irresponsible. At the Kennedy Center. Now we're Center, old and irresponsible. In the Helen Hayes room when we did that show where yeah. you were Reagan, and we took the Constitution and your tie, and we cut it to bits. <laughs> you remember that one? Yeah. <laughs> I remember uh, going around and hanging with you guys. We were on a, uh, a, the Arch Campbell show in the old days. And you were drawing the whole show as it happened. They had a, a bunch of paper on the back, and you were cartooning the whole show. Drawing as everything. And, uh, and, and I think that was... Anticipating. Was that, that, was that the first time you actually saw my, my real face, right? I think that's one of the first times that... I recognized you as you as you, yeah. Yeah, because... Except on the Metro when we talked. When we talked and, and met yeah. randomly. Now, here's the thing, and you guys have known this. Have you ever had any chance encounters with people uh, that you may have run into here or there? But Mike and I had worked together uh, comedy-wise. We did a, a Funniest Comedian in Washington contest together, uh, and it was the Video Pirates, and I was there by myself, and I was doing... A lot of shticky kind of stuff there myself. In fact, I was so skinny, I wore a pair of like corduroy jeans and a, and a dinner coat, and that was basically it on stage. Um, oh, yeah. You, then yeah, it was yeah. funny, and people didn't worry about it. Today, absolutely horrifying. It would be absolutely horrifying. <laughs> but in the day, it was kind of funny. But we were standing backstage, and we had already met on the Arch Campbell show. We'd seen each other around. But what we really, I think, solidified our friendship was there was a guy uh, who ran the show, and we won't mention any names. But he's but he, infamous. Yeah. 
his comedy routine was not going well. He would go out there and he would do a couple of jokes and you would basically hear wind blowing through tumbleweed across the stage in front of people where they're eating. And so we decided quite probably meanly and randomly to just start making animal noises. So we're backstage making these animal noises behind this scrim, which is very thin. Can't see behind it, but every noise is traveling right through it. So, so we're doing this whole thing behind. People start laughing as he's still telling his jokes and not realizing that we're doing just basically Noah's Ark right behind his head. And he comes off after his bit, and people are laughing. They're all applauding now. They must have thought it was part of the routine. Oh, this is wonderful. Animal noises and terrible comedy. <laughs> Yay! So he comes walking off stage, and he sees us standing there, and we turn around to sort of like he's standing there. We go, oh, and he goes, did you hear that out there? We're like, uh, what? What did you hear what, man? What did you hear? No, right out there. Did you hear that? I don't know, man. What are you talking about, man? Is that... I killed out there. And, and we just sort of looked at each other, had our own little silent laugh between ourselves, and it was a great bonding moment. It was lovely. And then uh, saw you later on the train, and then we just started chatting. We worked with a, a gentleman. Now, this is one of the things that you did along the way. You always did voices for a show called The Daily Feed. Yes, indeed. John Dryden and the Daily Feed. It was a wonderful little 90-second uh, audio cartoon that was syndicated for a while. Yeah, and mostly was heard in this area on a station called WHFS. Anybody heard HFS? Yeah? It was back in the day from 102.3, and then it continued on 99.1. And uh, you would come in and do a number of voices. Now, did uh, old Ben Skinbeard come in with you yes, often? Yes, he did. He yeah? and I did a number of repeat characters. We did the Stooges for John a lot of times. We did uh, Rocky and Bullwinkle. And he would plug them into political situations. He had Bushy the Squirrel, I remember. Yeah, um, Bushy the Squirrel. First Bush, and, and Bullwinkle was uh, Dan Quayle. <laughs> and that was perfect. Hey, hey, Rocky, you know. <laughs> that worked beautifully. Uh, he, uh, now, which of the Stooges did you do? I actually do all of them. Um, most everybody does curly. Yeah, well, but the and fun one is Larry. Larry is is perfect, and you know, um, come on, let me hear you, Larry. Well, here's my Larry. I got an idea. You're doing uh, sort of 1970s, Larry. Yeah, yeah, well, if it burned a hole in the <laughs> table, it'll burn a hole in the floor. You know, but the guy who does uh, uh, Stimpy said he was doing. Oh yeah, Billy West. Billy West, thank you. Is Stimpy was basically was a version of Larry, Larry Fine. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> you know. And uh, how's your mo? My mo, see? Yeah. Here's what you do. You take your, your throat and you stick it up your tonsils like that, see? Yeah, sure. It's now, a little bit of uh, Edward G. Robinson stuck in there. Everybody well, there's like a little that. tough guy. He was a bit of a tough guy. But the thing is, in your routine as Captain Cable, you were more of the straight man. You were kind of a mo. You were more of a exactly. George Burns. Yeah, I you was know. the, the, the uh, Bud Abbott. I was the, you know, the, the bossy curmudgeon who wanted to put on the show see and we're going to do it right now and and skinbeard would be the chaos who'd come in the clowning around and mess everything up mess he was up, your curly fight yeah and we'd fight and i we we evolved to the point where once a set it became a tradition for me to kill him and i, w <laughs> I would either shoot him stab him strangle him or something he'd fall down to the deck and then we, that was almost always our cue sometimes we'd go into different sketches we'd sing the lack of motion while yeah. he was lying on the floor with the microphone from a... It's like the locomotion, but it's the lack of motion. Yeah. Yeah. Would you like to hear it? Yeah, right. Do you have the... Oh, here we come. Bring it, breaking it out here. I remember this from a long time ago. Everybody's doing a brand new step now. Come on, baby, do the lack of motion. It don't take no energy, it don't take no pep now. Come on, baby, do the lack of motion. Never been a dance before to give you this thrill. The only dance that you can do by standing still. 
So come on, come on and do the lack of motion with me. You got to stand right there now. Ooh, come on, baby. Freeze up. Don't move. Well, now I think you're in the groove. Whoa, whoa, if you want to tap your toes, don't let me catch you. Come on, baby, do the lack of motion. Keep you cool and strike our pose and stand like a statue. Come on, baby, do the lack of motion. You don't need to break dance, you don't need the freak. Cause you can do the lack of motion fast asleep. So come on, come on and do the lack of motion with me. You got to stand right there now. Ooh, come on, baby. Freeze up. Don't move. Well, now I think you're in the groove. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All of you non dancers, get up on the floor now. Come on, baby, do the lack of motion. Pretend that you're a dummy in a department store now. Come on, baby, do the lack of motion. Might as well do this dance, don't you see? You're gonna wind up doing it posthumously. So come on, come on and do the lack of motion with me. Come on, baby, do the lack of motion. Die, 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 die. That was his part. <laughs> Standing in for a dead guy. Now you've got this. Tell me what that instrument is you have there. Oh, this is a banjo lele. This is a hybrid of a banjo and a ukulele. Are they going to just say a lele? <laughs> Technically, it's a ukulele, but from here down, it's a banjo. You know. A banjo and a banjo lele are the only instruments in the world that I know of that have two heads. This is called the head, and this is called the head. Which is the better head? Well, I kind of like this one, but that one's good too because you couldn't tune it if it didn't have that head. So, um, now, when did you start picking up the ukulele? Because I know you love the uke now. I love the uke. I am a big uke fan. I'm a huge uke fan. It's part of what brought me to where I am, wherever the hell that is. About. Where? How the hell did you get here? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I've been wondering that all night, and I still am not clear. Uh, but did you say you had more water? Uh, I have my water, and I'm more than willing to yeah, share. Okay. There you go, just sir. Just a sip. Just a sip. Thank you. Um, Who knows where I've been? <laughs> well, I've been following you pretty close. I think you're pretty safe. Who knows where I've been? Now, we're coming up on, uh, we've got a few minutes here. I do want to touch on the fact that you were in Fallout 4, mm -hmm. and in Fallout 4, you Couldn't were the voice prouder. of the what? Couldn't be prouder, I said. I know. It was, it was happy, a, a happy occasion to be passing you in the studios once again this time, and uh, they're always happier to see you than they are me. I can't, I can't help but notice that, well, but oh, yes. The bastards. But uh, you are playing the voice of the Minutemen. The Minuteman Radio. Minuteman Radio. Yeah. And, and did you base that upon anybody? Uh, no, they asked me for a generic, strong FM radio voice, and so I just went totally generic. I, I maybe, you know, DJs from the 60s who were on the AM stations, not the FM laid back kind of like this. Well, now we're going to hear a little Hendrix. But the guys, you know, the stacks of wax, the stew, we're going to pile them up for you here right now. The cookie crunch and double clutch and walking on down the road right here now, guys. You know, the, the That's right. The ones that are saying we're having a great time here with payola and cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why no time? Bing bong, five minutes past the big hour, five o'clock. So uh, you play this guy. You also do one of the uh, vault tech scientists. That's right. Yeah, he's basically leading everybody in saying, well, don't worry about a thing. Everything will be taken care of. You're one of the liars at the beginning of the exactly. game. All yes, right. Yes. Well, that's lovely. That's I a lovely think. thing. And, and everybody there, the fun thing about these games is that you get to go in, you record these things well ahead of time, and then they have you sign this non-disclosure agreement. Right. Which means you can't even tell your family. Right. Where have you been? Right. You know, you end up getting a divorce. Basically well, because you can't tell your wife where you've been. You seem so happy when you come home. Where were you? You asked me about the ukulele and I Yes, sir. You know, and I should tell you that about ten years ago or something when it was just coming I mean the banjo the ukulele has, has had a popularity frequency over the that's twenty year cycles. So well George could, and Paul have helped it was very, push very, it up. Very popular in the twenties. Yeah. Very popular again in the 40s, mm -hmm. and then in the 60s with Tiny Tim. Tiny Tim. Driver. And then it came back again recently, and I, I fell right in love with it. And this is kind of, since we're winding up here, I think, 
One of the reasons I got here is because everything I say yes. has been a lie. What? Yeah. Wait a minute. Are you or are you not Captain Clark Cable? Oh, I'm Captain Cable as much as I'm anybody. Mike Rosson? Maybe. Who's asking? Bill Collector. Okay, I'm Captain Cable. <laughs> But uh, I'd like to sing a little song for you that's based on this very thing. It's, you know, confession is good for the soul, ladies and gentlemen. And they say that honesty is the best policy. And uh, so by way of that, I'm, I'm just going to clear the air, get this all off my chest, okay? This song is called Everything I Say. Oh, my dearest, I have a secret I must share or else my heart will break. Oh, alas, this burden I can no longer bear. And so, this confession I make. Don't believe anything I tell you, darling. Everything I say is a lie. There ain't a single shred of truth in anything I've ever said. It's all been pie in the sky. I told you I was champagne, Charlie. Really, I'm just six-pack Pete. I told you I roared around town on a Harley, but all I got to roaring is my two flat feet. Oh yeah, the clothing and the cars were rented. The names and the places all invented. Baby, when I said it, I really meant it. But everything I say is a lie. Cue the horns. ba da ba da ba 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 Everything I say is a lie. ba da ba da ba 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 da ba da ba I guess I'm just that kind of guy. I told you I stayed at the Waldorf Astoria. And I was a trader in stocks But really I live at the Y in Peoria And I only own three pairs of socks I got the conscience of an alligator I'm one pernicious prevaricator I'll tell you something new or true to better Different later, everything I say is a lie Oh, but there was one time I really told the truth On the day we said I do no, you don't believe me anymore. I wouldn't if I were you. So now you know the reason why all I ever gave you was an alibi. Cross my heart and hope to die. Everything I say is a lie. I really mean it. Everything I say is a lie. And I'm not kidding. Everything I say is a lie. Just being honest. Everything I ever told you was just an outright bald-faced, big, fat, stinking lie, 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 Thank you. All right, folks. We have about seven minutes until we're going to bring up a film that, Mike, you made in the 1980s, I believe. I didn't make it. I was in it. You were in it. 1986? Yeah, 96. 96. 1996. Taylor, and because it was so far ago yeah. with that technology, My the brother. film is silent. Uh, <laughs> the film was silent. We couldn't uh, get the mics to work that day, I think. Really? Is no, that what it no, was? No, it wasn't. Well, it was, it's called The Better Half. And uh, Brad, if you can bring that up real quick. We'll start that while we allow him. We'll get things set up on that. This is Brad Dismukes, one of the producers of, of said movie. The producer. Sure. And uh, we have a young lady over here we'd like to bring up. There's any way to move old Ben Skinbeard out of the way. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Jan Johns. Jan Johns, you may know from Fallout 4 as Scribe Halen. All right, now we're, let's try this out here. I hope this we, is working. Uh, we didn't have time to uh, troubleshoot this beforehand, so fingers crossed. Hey, hey. All right, so we have a moment here while you guys are waiting. If there's any way, Brad, actually, if you could help for a sec while I'm setting this up and take the microphone in front of us. Anyone have a question for Michael Rawson? Any questions for, excuse me, sorry, Captain Cable? Hey, yeah, get it right. All right, here we go. We have a question. Excellent. Hello. Oh, it works. Can my can my blonde friend pull on your beard? Hold 
on my beard. Eh? Yeah. Is this a luck thing? Is he? It can be whatever he wants it to be. It's his world, man. It's his imagination. Okay. If someone wants to pull on my beard. Yeah, the, the blonde girl, right? Yes, there. yes, you may. Absolutely. Oh, okay. Actually, I, I would welcome it. But you must, <laughs> you must pay the consequences. You've got to take one of the things that's here in the box. Not take it, but accept the consequences of. There's two things in this box. One or the other, you have to choose. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. All right, so this here she called, comes. This is called let's strike a bargain. It's like let's make a deal. You can pull my beard, but you have to take something in the box. Okay. Now, is Recon in the house? Recon. And we open the box and we see what's in store for you. Well, we have two Reaching in the box. We have a bomb. And we have a box. Actually, there's a box inside the box. The bomb has lost its fuse, but I can fix that. So it's your choice the bomb or the box. Which is it? She's okay. going with the box. The box. Let's see what's in this box. Go! <laughs> now you know what that means. It's happy to see you. No. That means you got to take the bomb. Because that's the default. So that was the big deal of the day. I know what you're saying, big deal. We're going to have to do the bomb. Are you ready? Yep. You count us down. Three, two, two. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. You've been a wonderful audience. <laughs> awesome. Since we're on the subject of beards, my qu simple question is, how can I get my beard like yours? Well, you don't shave it. <laughs> yeah, those blades are an anathema to whiskers. But uh, what, what, what I always did was um, I got to a point when I was uh, 12 or 13, started growing in, and I said, oh, I'll be a man, I'll shave. And one day I got to looking at it, and I've heard years later that either Charles Darwin or Charles Dickens, they both, Charles D. with a big beard, one of them told a story that they were watching their dad shave, and they said, Daddy, why are you doing that? And he said, you know what, you're right. And he threw the razor out the window and forgot about it forever. Just let it out, let it out, see what happens. Right? Yeah. Another question for... Growing a beard, that's pretty easy do to do. A, Just do let we it need out. the music turned up? All right, let's uh, make sure we have... We're getting our volume set here. We don't know whether this is going to play with the volume. Again, it's a silent movie. However, there are sound effects and there's music that Brad has worked very hard on. We want to make sure are heard. So uh, if Recon Die is in the house, any of our sound guys in the house, anybody here? We have time for another question. Do you have a question? You're right up here now. So what's your question for Mike Rosson? We do need help. We have a yes on the answer. We do need help. So I'm going, hello there. Are you a sound or video person? Yes. <laughs> no? Well, you're welcome anyway. Come on in. See if you can get it to appear on the screen. He doesn't have it. Okay, well, we have sound, but nothing else. Hang on. We need picture and sound. I'm going to start picking up some of these little scraps of paper. You know, we shouldn't leave these about. Oh, no, no, no. You're the... No, wait a minute. You should... Oh, dear. Like, paper works. Oh, God. Oh, God. I don't really need that much on it. Sorry. Now, this might look amazing, but you guys have seen this happening in every toilet bowl here at MAGFest. Wait until tomorrow night. I think I got it. Okay. I'm good. Sorry. Would anybody like a souvenir? <laughs> For the late show, he uses the other side. Another question for Mr. Oh, Ross. Oh, no question. 
I don't work for MAGFest, but I do do IT, so I might be able to help with the video and sound. I would Woo! greatly appreciate that. Thank you very much. Uh huh. We do. Drag it to the right. Hmm. Oh yeah, it's a it's a mirrored screen. I see. Okay, Windows key P. This is my opportunity to gloat as a Mac user. Need I say more? Yeah, put it on. <laughs> there we go. Learning as we go. There it is. Yay. I believe that we do. Inter pluribus cerebrum means one brain among us. And let's give it a go. Now, what we'd like to do here, oh, you have another question? Please, jump in. All right, uh, this is a point of contention with the people that are in my hotel room, um, and I want your opinion on this. Who do you think would win in a fight, Lady Gaga, Katy Perry, or Kesha? Who are they fighting? The, each other. Oh. You're the guy who killed all the mic scares. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I did a low karma run, so. Lady Gaga, Katy Perry, or who? Kesha. Oh, Kesha. Well, Kesha dies instantly. We know that. Yeah. Um, I think if it's prison rules, I think Kesha's going to come out on top. Fair fight, though. Yeah, Maybe know, not. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, everyone give a big round of applause for Recon Die. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> cool jacket. All right, uh, I think we're, we're okay to start here. Let's give it a shot. All right, Brad, come on up here. Here's what we're going to do. Uh, Mike plays a character in this movie. So does and Mike's so brother. Mike will be providing noise, voice, anything of that nature for his character. It Jan, why don't you come closer? Lines. Everybody scoot in close over here, Mike. Yeah. Grab your mic, Mike. Yeah, and... Uh, Jan, pull your chair over here. Mike, pull your chair over. Come over. We can see the screen. Brad, you come on over here. Brad is in the movie. Brad, you should play yourself. And uh, we can also have you. Uh, why don't you do reading the title cards that are not voice? The action title cards. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, and, and even the beginning. It starts with the credits and things of that sort and opening credits and all that. Sure. And uh, we'll take turns with uh, Ken. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, so, and you will be <laughs> Sherry Elliker. Now, Sherry Elliker is in this as well as Mike, and you might know Sherry as uh, Star Cross Palin. Uh, Star, is it Star Cross Palin? No. No. Yes. Scribe. Cro She's in Fallout 3. All right. Coincidentally, uh, Mike's brother Al is in this movie My as brother well. Brother Al, the great magician Al Rawson, so animator. So you should do Al's voice since it's probably fairly close anyway. Yeah, I so think I could. So you, you voice, uh, you <laughs> voice the lead character. Okay. And sure, I go, this is the better half. So you guys can watch the film. No need to watch us. We're not really here. Pay no attention. Yeah, pay no attention to us. And uh, are you okay, Jan? <laughs> well, you can share my mic if you wish, if that won't make it over. Will this, uh, hey, Recon, will this mic come any closer over here? Or is it just sort of stuck there? She wants to know if she, you can lengthen the cord. Just a little slack. <laughs> there we go. Thank you very much. Very good. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Brad, is there anything you'd like to tell us before we start about this film? Uh, enjoy it. All right, we're just diving right in. Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time in how many years? 20. 20 years, the better half. Uh, whatever board thing you got to press there, uh, it might be the... Uh Oh, it's something wrong with the laptop. You see, I did warn you. We didn't have time to trouble. This here? Is that it? Oh, look here. 
That doesn't go anywhere. Some silent films are more silent than others. Some of them don't actually move. You guys have any songs you want to sing? Uh, just go ahead and entertain yourselves. Yeah, someone's playing around beneath the table. Oh, nice. Right. Ah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> might have been mine, and I like you all the better for it. Just don't slip your hotel. All right, so there we go. Is that you think that'll do it? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the better half, directed by E.P. Taylor, written by S.H. Gilbert. Jerry Elliger, Alan Rossett, Stefan Gilbert, Michael Rossett, Casey Sutton, Brandis Mews, Ken Daly Jr., Eddie Sutton. Didn't read fast enough. Lovely come on. Sons of bitches! Now get out here! What are you doing? Where are you? The kitchen from hell.
Time to make the salad. Music courtesy of Godzilla vs. the Smog Monster. Reggie Baby, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The educated consumer eats. What am I gonna eat? I'm so hungry. Uh, oh, this looks delicious. What? Come here, you chicken. You bastard. I'll oh. take care of you. Come here, you son. I can't ah. unsee that. This is good. Sounds tasty, yet just outside of my budget. Man. Well, uh, maybe I'll eat that uh, cardboard. That? What? <gasps> yes. This is it. Well, oh, she's, she's out there to hear. Well, you sexy young thing. He want an egg sandwich. Ha <laughs> ha. There, come here. Everybody, let me clean up. Look. Yeah. yeah, that's good. That's good. Oh boy, sexy grease off. A little under here, that'll be perfect. Uh huh. Now maybe some. Oh, sweet. All right, I'm ready. I'm ready. Romance is in the air. <laughs> hey, you little loves your bar. Get you thrown. We have paying customers. Get ready to fire up the grill. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Fire up the grill. Get it. Hurry up with that egg salad! Have uh, something funny with that egg salad! What? Oh no! Ooh. Oh, this smells good. Hello there, little sweet lady. What can I get for you? Is your egg salad fresh? Is it, oh, is it fresh? fresh? Any fresher would sell it. Well, then, I'll try one sandwich on wheat bread to go, please. Oh, sir. <laughs> Certainly. Well, right away. Next in choice, I have my number one egg chef gourmet salad created right on it. <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> There's something strangely sexy about you. Hey, you little bastard! What? Quit playing with the jello! An egg salad sandwich to go and be sure to use the good oh, bread! I'm pointing and huffing and gone. I'm gonna make you an egg salad sandwich you'll never forget, mister. Yeah. Ooh, egg salad sandwich, eh? I love making egg salad sandwiches. And now, oh. ladies and gentlemen, the one thing this misbegotten creature was born to do may have to wait. We don't have as much time as we wanted. The last thing you'll be seeing here today is the dance of the egg salad sandwich. I would like to point out as producer and cinematographer for this film, Mr. Rawson did this in one take. He moves like an angel. And we didn't even eat the egg salad afterwards. Thought I saw an edit but I'll go with the one take thing. There's a two take. <laughs> Still one take. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we leave you with this. The dance of the egg salad sandwich. How did he get here? We'll we're, never know. We're still trying to figure that out. Maybe, maybe one day. We'll be back again later at 10 in this very room for Voice of Palooza. In the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, thanks once again to Jan Johns, Brad Dismukes, and the man of the hour, Captain Cable. Thank you ever so much, all of you. God bless you and your hearts and your families. Never forget. For anyone who would care to see the rest of this film, it is available on Vimeo. That's right. Go look for The Better Half on Vimeo. Producer Brad Dismukes, it was a lovely time. Great to see each and every one of you here. We'll see you back here again, 10 p.m. We're going to be joined, most of the people here on this stage, by John Patrick Lowry, Ellen McLean, 
and Alexander Brandon. We'll see you then. Good night. Never forget. Champagne for your real friends, real pain for your champagne. Oh, by the way, everybody, right over there we have Christopher Walker. He'll be joining us downstairs in a few minutes at the autograph session. Uh, Christopher plays uh, one of the voices. Which is your character again, Chris? Initiate Park? Clerk, Initiate Clerk. He is in uh, Fallout 4, so you want to ask him about all of those things. We're going downstairs to the lair. We'll see you there. We'll see you up here at 10. Good night, everybody.